right, we are starting on unit four, where this is after unit four, we are at our halfway point in chemistry B. So this unit is all about energy. Um, we're gonna start by talking about conservation of energy, the law of conservation of energy. Um, and this is something that you need to be familiar with so that you can describe what's going on in terms of systems and surroundings when energy is absorbed or at least released in chemical reactions, in physical changes, things like that. So you'll know you really have this down if you are able to classify things as exothermic or endothermic. Um, so first things first is just to kind of talk about where this energy stuff comes from. So whenever a chemical reaction takes place, energy is either released or absorbed. Energy has to be involved because you've got the matter changing, right? And that comes from the bonds that are broken and formed, right? So in every reaction, there are bonds that break and there are bonds that form. When the bonds break, they release energy. When the bonds form, they store energy. And when this happens in an unequal amount, that determines when if overall energy is released, so there's a lot more breaking, or if energy is absorbed, there's a lot more reforming. So to start talking about this energy releasing and energy absorbing and things like that, we need to get some terminology set, all right? So you, whenever you are thinking about these types of reactions and changes, you have to make sure you're straight on what the system is versus the surrounding. All right, so the system is always the actual molecules going through the change. All right, that could be the chemicals that are going through a chemical reaction. That could be, you know, so the chemical that is changing its state, like when water boils, that's energy is involved there. Um, it, it's whatever the molecules actually doing the change are. That's your system. The surroundings is everything else. All right, you, when you are observing reactions and things like that, or physical changes, you are 99% of the time in the surroundings. All right, the only time that you are the system is when you think about like, you know, the, the food inside your body. Right? When you break that down and release the energy from the food, that makes you warm because your body is going through a reaction. All right? But, you know, when it comes to this class and we're dealing with things, we really were in the surroundings. So we're observing the opposite of what's actually happening. So, a couple other big important terms to know of. And we talked about these a long time ago in unit one of chemistry A, but exothermic, all right, means that your system gives off heat or energy. So if you kind of break that word down, exo, like the word exit, all right, means leaves, all right, and then therm, like kind of like a thermal blanket, means heat, all right, so exothermic means that the heat leaves the system, it's given off. All right, so let's think about that kind of logically here, because this is the, these are the sorts of things that you've got to be able to describe. So if the heat is leaving the system, then what do you think is gonna happen to the temperature of that system if it's losing heat? All right, your system, the temperature is gonna go down, but the surroundings where you are, where this heat actually goes, temperature of the surroundings, the temperature goes up, okay? So it, it's always, I, the one thing I will suggest and I always suggest to my students is just really take your time to think these through. Put yourself in the system knowing that what you're used to thinking is actually what's going on in the surroundings. All right? so. Endothermic is the opposite. Endo means in, and then heat goes in. All right, so that means this time the temperature inside the system, it's gaining that heat. So the temperature in the system is gonna go up and the surroundings where you are, things are gonna feel cool. All right, so this is something you really wanna wrap your head around and make sure you get straight. So 
see if you can fill in these blanks based on just kind of going over the last couple of slides. Pause the video, try it on your own. All right, so the system is the chemicals. I can get this to fit. All right, the surroundings are everything else. Or you can even think of it as me. So really when it comes down to this class, we're gonna talk mostly in terms of you being the surroundings. Exothermic means the system releases or gives up the heater energy. So the temperature of the system goes down, temperature of the surroundings goes up, all right? Endothermic means the system gains or absorbs the heat and energy. So the temperature of the system is gonna go up and vice versa, the temperature of the surroundings goes down, all right? So this is where that whole law of conservation of energy comes from, all right? Energy is not lost, it's just always moving from one place, or to, from one place to another. All right, so if something gains energy, something had to lose it. If something is losing energy, that has to be gained somewhere else, all right? So here's the big practice item for this one, is think about these things, all right? And then a lot of times you're probably gonna have to think about them in terms of yourself and what you feel happening, and then just remembering that that's the opposite of what's going on in the system. But there's also try thinking from the point of view of the molecules, all right? So pause the video, see if you can get these right, but also come up with a, a reasoning why you choose endo or exothermic, either based on what you know is happening in the surroundings or what you know is happening in the system. All right, so an ice pack, if you've ever had one of those, it's, you know, it starts out room temperature and then you sit there and you kind of crush it up and then it gets cool. All right, so when you crush it up and a chemical reaction takes place, the surroundings get cool, which means the chemicals inside the bag had to get hot. So that's endo, it's gaining, the system is gaining the energy. Burning wood, all right, if you've ever been near a fire, it feels warm. So on the surroundings, you're, the surroundings are gaining heat, which means the system is giving, them off, giving that heat off, so it's exothermic melting ice so melting ice my my drink is going to get cold which means that the ice is absorbing or taking in the heat from my drink all right you can also think of it as melting ice you know, if we tie this back into some of the other things we talked about before, we're going from solid to liquid, which means our molecules are moving around more, they're gaining heat. All right, so this is endothermic. All right, and explosion, very similar to burning wood. All right, explosions are warm, lots of energy is given off, so that's exothermic. Freezing ice, so going the other way, all right? Actually making the ice cold means that you've got to remove the heat from the ice. You can also think that you're taking liquid water and turning it into solid water. You're removing energy from that water, all right? So freezing ice is actually exothermic. Now this last one's probably a little tricky because, I don't know about you, I don't really notice a distinct temperature change when I dissolve sugar and water or salt and water or anything like that. So this one you really kind of got to sit there and combine some stuff that we've already been talking about with this new idea of exo and endothermic. All right, we know that when we dissolve sugar, all right, collisions are happening. We're breaking it up, all right, and in order to do that, those collisions are gonna take some energy. All right, so we have to put energy into this. It's gonna take some energy to get the sugar to dissolve with the water, because it's gonna take some energy to cause those collisions. So this is an 
endothermic process. We gotta put energy into it to make it happen. Hopefully this all makes sense, but if it doesn't, definitely come to a help session. Let's talk this stuff through. And this is one of those things where it really does take some really careful thought and kind of logicking your way through it.